Hi everyone, my name is Eve and if you've watched the University YouTube channel before you've probably seen me in past videos. Today is slightly different, so I've done a few sort of sit down videos recently to do with exam tips or what to do after you've finished your fourth year. Today is more of a vlog style, hence why I'm holding this camera like this and it feels very strange. Um, I've not done this in a very long time, so I may be a little bit out of practice but we'll see how it goes, my arm is already aching. But today I am going to be taking you guys thrifting, charity shopping, whatever you'd like to call it in Sterling. So I personally don't do any fast fashion anymore. I get as many of my clothes and things as possible secondhand. So that would be charity shopping or Depop or jumble sales um, or you know friends are getting rid of clothes. Um, that's the way that I do it at the moment. So I've been doing that for a while and so hopefully I will be able to give you guys some good tips on how best to find all the best items and um, yeah, just sort of where there is in Sterling to do that kind of thing. And sort of keeping in line with the video, I decided I would wear all thrifted clothing, so I'll try and show you that. So I have my jacket, which is from a vintage store in Glasgow. This also is from a vintage store in Glasgow. These dungarees I got in like a, it was almost like a pop-up market when I was down in Leeds Festival a few years ago. And my Doc Martin boots are also secondhand. I got them on Depop, uh, but I do know that some charity shops do hold them. If you're lucky, you might find them. So yeah, I guess without further ado, uh, let's, Go try shopping. So after however long I have been doing this vlogging thing for, I am still terrible at recording myself in public and so I actually didn't really end up doing that. But I recorded some snippets of whilst I was out and I thought since I'm not really talking in them, I would do a little voiceover just sort of telling you a little bit what I was doing and also just some tips for thrifting or charity shopping. But first of all, I went into Unorthodox and got coffee because I really needed it and I hadn't been in a while. So it was just nice for me to get a little coffee to start my day. So the first tip, that I have is charity shops and sort of vintage stores can be quite overwhelming. So the best thing to do, in my opinion, is to just sort of section it. So as soon as you walk in, take a quick overview of kind of the different areas. So whether it's divided into different types of clothes or if it's got a homeware section, section it off and do it little section by little section. So for example, in here, they had the different types of book areas. Um, they also had this eco-friendly section, which is good if you're like me and you like to be as ethical as possible. The second tip I have is to go in with a vague goal. So for example, say to yourself, okay, well today I would like to try and find trousers or today I would like to find a pair of shoes or today I would like to find some crockery. And then it just makes it a lot easier and a lot less overwhelming because you know there's like a couple specific things that you're looking for. On top of that, I guess my biggest tip would be just like take your time because when things are overwhelming, you tend to just sort of like rush through it because it's like, oh my God, it's so scary. You want to get out there as quick as possible. But just just try and take your time, look through stuff carefully. And if you take your time, you're more likely to find something that you like. And sort of following on from that, also go through different sections and different areas more than once because I definitely found that it took me a good two or three times to go around each of the shops to actually pick up things and notice things I hadn't seen at all before. Oh, this section was really cool. It was just a bunch of old like PS2 and like The Sims. I was so close to buying The Sims 3, but I was like, oh my God, you don't do it. I was also just trying to show off sort of men's section stuff. So this was just a pair of Tommy Hilfiger jeans. It shows you that you can get designer stuff in charity shops if you look correctly. <laughs> The next tip that I have is just to sort of be open-minded. I think like what I tend to do is I try and envision the outfits. So if I see something and I'm like, oh, that's nice, but I'm not sure, I pick it up and I tend to just sort of like try and think about what I might match it with. So I'm like, okay, I like it or mm, I'm not sure about it. And then I try and think about what I have that might go with it. Also, I found a prom dress in here. So when things like that open back up again, like this is definitely somewhere to look. sort of final little tip that I had was just sort of like taking a chance on items. So whether that be picking them up from the start, walking around with them and not leaving with them and sort of putting them back or be that actually just 
buying them and trying on the outfits once you get home and seeing if you like it. Because at the end of the day, especially when it's from a charity shop, you're putting money into such a good cause. And for me, what a lot of the time what I will do is if I'm not 100% sure about something, um, I'll take it home, I'll try it on, and if I don't like it, I will give it to a friend that's maybe interested in it. Or for example, one of the items that I bought today, I wasn't 100% sure about. And so I thought my sister would like it if I didn't like it. So yeah, taking a chance on items is definitely a good idea. This totally just like blew my mind that I saw goggles in here by the way. It totally brought me back to being like, I don't even know, like 12 years old, but it was really cool. Again, trying to look at the sort of men's sections to give you guys an idea of what's available in both. And I saw this really cute jacket and I just really like the colors of it actually. <laughs> shown a few of these but there were quite a few records in a lot of the stores and although they might not be what everyone's looking for it's worth sort of like checking it out I was so sad the store was closed but they had this awesome telephone and Burks in the window and I think they would have had some really good stuff inside. And then this was the last door and it was just to show you that that was my first flat in Sterling and that's my other favourite coffee shop. It's called HBW. This mirror was really really pretty but I have too many mirrors and so I just stopped myself from buying it. Also, if you're a student and you need to semi-furnish your flat, have a look in the charity shops because there was a desk here for five pounds. Here they had some, they weren't actually Le Creuset, I got the latest check, but even still really good quality pots and they were like 25 and 35 pounds. And then on my way home, I had to pick up one of these vegan Biscoff buns from Vera Artisan Bakery and it was so, so good. Oh, oh God, that's maybe a little bit too low down. So I am back and I have finished shopping at the different charity shops around Sterling. I honestly didn't realize how many there were. There are loads of charity shops around there and they're all really close together. I probably will have done like a voiceover explaining that already, but I was quite surprised. I have done a bit of charity shopping but not that much um, and I didn't realise how much potential there is in Sterling charity shops. So I'm gonna try and show you in order of the way that I actually went into them of what I got. Pretty much every store that I went into I either got something or saw something that I wanted but didn't buy and that's because I'm sure I showed some clips in the dip before but there is so much lovely homeware stuff like I'm a bit of a sucker for vintage and sort of old timey looking homeware stuff um prime example I suppose is this kind of jug that I have here and there was so much nice crockery and like homeware stuff but I was a little bit worried about buying that and it breaking although there was some really nice stuff and I would have bought a lot more so I'll try and do this in order if I can remember what I bought where so the first shop that I went into was obviously the Oxfam bookshop and they have so many books in there and I had told myself <laughs> not to buy any books. I had told myself from the start, don't buy any books because I have a backload of probably five to ten books that I still need to read. I still bought books, <laughs> it's really bad. But anyway, so the one book that I bought from that store was this one. Um, I have not heard of it before. I just thought that it sounded like it would be good. I quite like like scary books. Um, and this one, one of them said that like, you know, if you want to be freaked out at midnight in your bed, then this is the perfect book for you kind of thing, which I'm not sure I do want to be freaked out at midnight in my bed, but I'm also just a bit of a sucker for covers and I like the look of this one. These two items aren't really charity shop related, but I they had them in this store and I'm pretty sure that I took some footage and showed these things within the store and if you are living in Sterling whether you're like a student or you just live there and you're someone like me that tries to be as sort of ethical and responsible as possible within the store they had a load of faith in nature stuff which is the shampoo and conditioner that I use and I needed some soap so I bought a, a lavender one I've been kind of obsessed 
with lavender at the moment. It was a pretty fair price, so I bought that. I feel like I should maybe try and mention the prices of things actually. Let's backtrack. For the book, this one was $2.49. The soap was $1.99. Um, I think proceeds still go to Oxfam. And then I also have been getting well into my incense at the moment, and so I just got this one because it smelled nice. And that was $2.99. So the next one that I went into, my camera just does not want to stay focused on me today. The next one that I went into was one of the, there's two Cancer Research UK stores pretty close together within the Stirling Town Centre. This was the first one that I went to, which is the one that's across the road from the Oxfam bookstore. So, <laughs> again, I told myself not to buy any books, but I saw this one. The reason I wanted to read it is, I don't think it's the same author, but I read a book that was one of my favourite books I've ever read, but Netflix have actually just turned into a movie, and the movie's not as good, I'm just saying. It's called The Woman in the Window. Again, like I said, I'm a sucker for covers, and the covers looked very similar to each other. Sorry if there's any background noise in the first part of that because I forgot my window was open and you can probably hear people in the background. So apologies, <laughs> hopefully it's not too loud. Again, I'm kind of into like thrillery type books. This was only a pound, so all the books within the Cancer Research UK, the one across from Oxfam, were one pound. Then getting on to clothes. So this first one, I, I still like it, but now that I've got it, I'm like not so sure how much I will actually wear it. I think I will make use out of it, definitely. It's not my favorite thing that I got. But anyway, I'll show you anyway. It's this little like checkered plaid skirt, which I think this is technically supposed to be the front, but I actually think that it will look nicer this way round. I think what I need to do is try it on with a few things and see. And that was three pounds. The next thing that I got was just this jumper, which is kind of like a thick knit. Is it like fisherman's knit? Is that what it's called? Something like that. It's this really nice dark forest green color. It's quite a heavy jumper and it's got quite straight sleeves. Doesn't really cuff too much and also doesn't really cuff at the bottom. I think this will be really nice. And that one was 450. Then the next shop that I went into was, I think there's another cancer research shop, the one that's just further up the road. The first thing that I got from there is, compared to everything else, everything else is kind of fashion based. This was a pair of bicycle shorts. Just goes to show you can really get anything in a charity shop if you look. I have a couple pair of workout shorts, um, but they're really small. I just kind of wanted a bit of a longer pair so that for kind of like um, chafing, I like the length of these and they have a nice little zip in the back. So that's very useful. And they were three pounds. So the next thing that I got from the Cancer Research, the second shop, was this little skirt, which again is a bit of a, a rogue choice for me. I don't usually go for red, but I I think it would actually be really pretty. Straight and then got this kind of frilled bit at the bottom and I would never normally go for that but I just saw it and I thought actually I just sort of envisioned how it would look and that was 225 and then the last store that I actually bought something from was the PDS, PDSA store. It's not new, apparently they had one that was further up the road and they've just changed location, but since I've been there, the location is new. It was a really lovely store. It was quite big. They had a lot of stuff and the staff were really, really nice. Uh, one of them actually came over to me and sort of asked about why I was filming and what I was doing and told them all about it and they were just really interested. So the first thing that I got is not actually for me, it's for my friend. I don't know why I saw it and I just kind of thought of her, but it's just this little butterfly pin and it's just like, I think it's so pretty. I'm not a pin wearer, but if I was, oh my God. I don't even know if she'll like it, but I just saw it and it made me think of her. And that was only 2 49 And then the second thing that I got from the PDSA store, I'm so happy I found this because I have been looking for a skirt or a dress like this for a very long time and I just can't find them anywhere. I was like, I couldn't find like a description to put in on Depop or anything like that, or I've never seen them in vintage stores. It's one of these kind of like floaty white, skirt and it's got the kind of um different textures on it which I think is just so nice and then it's got this little like drawstring that has the little like wooden beads on it. This was my favourite item that I got and that was £3.49. So that is everything that I managed to get today. There's something about charity shopping and vintage shopping that I just find so like exciting and thrilling. It's like you'll go in and it's not like you can just search exactly what you want. A lot of the time I don't really go in with a vision of what I'm planning on getting. I just kind of go in and have a look around and pick up some things and half the time it'll be like I'll pick up four or five things and I'll only buy one but it's so worth it and honestly I don't think people realize how much potential there is 
in, in charity shops. If you go in and you're open minded, like you can find so much stuff in there. And it's not just clothes, like you could literally get your whole crockery set. Or if you know somebody that likes like vintagey stuff and their birthday's coming up, you go buy them like a really nice little vintage tea set or something like that. And some of the stuff in there is in like perfect condition. Some things actually just haven't been touched. Like this book that I bought, yeah, the spine is not broken. The spine is completely fine. So I don't even know if someone's actually read that before me or if they've bought it and just not read it. There was one thing I was trying to find today and I didn't get, but I'm gonna keep my eye out in future and hopefully get one in a charity shop and that's a crochet blanket. So yeah, that was me sort of taking you along charity shopping or thrifting, secondhand shopping, whatever you like to call it with me. And I hope that it's inspired you a little bit and it's shown you how much the Sterling charity shops really have potential. If you fancy trying out some charity shopping and some secondhand shopping, I definitely think that you should go for it. It's so fun and it's, you can find some really nice little things that are just so different and individual. And it's always just like really nice to know that you found something nice but you've also put money into like a good cause even if you're vintage shopping it's like you're putting it into like a smaller business rather than like a big organization as well i hope that my little tips that i maybe added into the voiceover from before also help you if you've ever gone into a charity shop and just been very unsure about how to start and you think that you can't find anything or you think that you can't do charity shopping because you've no idea where to start. I hope that that helps you and that you in future decide to go and do find some items that you really really love. Thank you very much for watching, I hope that you enjoyed and if you did be sure to like this video because I'm sure the university would really appreciate it and so would I and without further ado thank you very much for watching and have a good day.